So apparently while I was busy releasing my Xbox Series X impressions video yesterday, Sony decided to release their own video, a PlayStation 5 teardown, where we really get to learn quite a bit about the console. Now, on the video itself, it reads right here, do not try this at home. You will see later in the video that you do have to actually remove the panels, the side panels on the PS5 to access the SSD. So for those looking to expand their storage, do try this at home. But other than that, yeah, the guy goes even beyond that and really tears the PS5 down piece by piece and shows us all of the internal components. It's actually pretty interesting. So I'd like to go ahead and check this out, react with you guys, comment along the way. So here it is, PlayStation 5 teardown. You can see how massive the console is. It's, I mean, wow. We have seen comparison shots showing how tall the PS5 is compared to the Series X. It's straight up the largest console in modern history. But I'll say again, if it ultimately leads to better cooling, then, you know, it's a worthwhile compromise. But yeah, the standard affair when it comes to ports. Huh, okay, so that's what this little circle was for. I've seen that before. I didn't know what it was intended for. Looks like it's to screw the stand in. And you can plug it back in with this lid that it comes with. That's nice. Huh. And now the stand houses the screw. And everything shifted now so that it can be placed horizontally. That's an interesting stand. It's a more intricate stand than I expected. So the white panels on both sides can be removed by the users themselves. So with a little bit of effort, yeah, it's very easily removable. And there were rumors of this when screenshots and photos of those uh, side panels leaked. The groove suggests that they're easily removable. And it would seem as though that is true. And here is the fan. Uh, and these grooves will allow people to... Ah, that's interesting. That's a nice consideration. Uh, but yeah, the grooves allow people to essentially 3D print their own custom lids for the PS5. That's the uh, storage expansion, so you do have to take off the side panels. Now this is where you start getting into... Uh, into uh, compromising your warranty territory. So yeah, the warranty at that point is uh, no longer valid, I surmise. But yeah, you can see just how far Sony's gone to ensure that we don't have a repeat of PS4 and PS4 Pro's cooling. Those two consoles can sound like a jet engine when running full power, especially my PS4 Pro when I'm playing God of War, for example. It gets so loud, and so now with this bigger casing, with its aerodynamic design, the hope is that the console will stay really quiet. Hmm. Okay, that's pretty neat. And obviously the uh, Bluetooth disk drive. 
or sorry, the Blu-ray disc drive is something that um, digital edition purchasers won't have to deal with. And there it is, the SOC, the motherboard, whatever you want to call it. Really, that's the core of the PlayStation 5, that sheet of silicon. Everything else is dedicated to cooling. CPU is 最大 2.23 so yeah, that right there, 5.5 gigabytes per second. That's blazing quick. It's twice as much as Xbox Series X, from what I understand. ちょうきで安定した高い冷却性能を実現するため、このティムに液体金属を採用しました。はい。我々は2年以上前からこの液体金属を採用するための準備をしてきました。考えうるありとあらゆる試験を実施し、採用に至っています。はい、オッケー。
insert the SSD and then put everything back together. Now the advantage here is that there are third party solutions that you can go for. So whereas with Series X, you're limited to the proprietary Microsoft solution, the one terabyte SSD. With this, if some other third party comes up with a two terabyte SSD that will work well with the PS5 and will sell it at a more markdown price, maybe you can go for that, get that third party solution, insert it to your PS5 and uh, use that. So it allows more flexibility even if you need more effort to actually access the bay itself. But the biggest thing is, yeah, cooling. You can see just uh, how much ventilation there is, how many grills there are around the console, just how aerodynamically the console is shaped with all that curvature and just how big the heat sink is. You can really tell from this teardown that Sony really went out of their way to ensure the cooling solution on PS5 is as pristine as it can be and from impressions of Japanese outlets who have gotten their hands on the PS5 they've all noted how quiet the PlayStation 5 runs so so far so good with this hopefully in the long term we're gonna see PlayStation 5 run quietly and cool enough where uh, the console is just gonna blend in the background rather than be distracting to the audio experience of a video game, especially with 3D audio being such a big thing for PlayStation 5, they really have to make sure nothing's detracting from that. But yeah, overall, the reaction to the PS5 teardown has been very positive. You can see right here from the likes to dislikes ratio that a lot of people enjoyed just seeing what goes into uh, assembling a PlayStation 5, how you can access important components like the SSD expansion, and a lot of people seem to be praising some of the uh, clever solutions and the professionalism of that teardown and the emphasis on, you know, little details like bays to vacuum uh, dust that might get into the PlayStation 5. Just a lot of interesting considerations. And again, the ease of tearing down the PS5 means that it'll be easy for repairs. And uh, yeah, just all around, they did a good job with it, uh, especially for enthusiasts of tech. But obviously the real test will be getting the PS5 on hand and testing out the cooling, the performance, the SSD, and uh, the graphical capabilities of the hardware. But until the launch of the PlayStation 5, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on everything you saw in the teardown. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.